My name's Heidi Fossil. I'm from A Plus Maths. I hope you've all been enjoying the videos I've been putting out on all different topics and hopefully you'll continue to enjoy them in the future. I've been working on the topics of networks and I thought that we might continue on what's called weighted networks. So this is getting a little bit more specific into where it's going to be used in a real life situation. So a weighted network is just a normal network that we've already spent time talking about except this time it's going to have numbers assigned to each edge which will represent a time or a distance that it takes to get from one vertice to the next or one activity to the next activity. So let's have a look here at an example that I've drawn. If I want to get from A to B it would be a hundred kilometers to travel. If I want to go from B to C it would be 50 and if I want to go from C to D it would be 150 and if I wanted to go from A to D then I would have to look at all the different routes that I could take to get from A to D and then I would choose the route that I would like to take depending on how much time I would have if one is more scenic or etc. So if I wanted to get from A to D I could take A to B, B to C, C to D, which would be 250, 300 kilometers, or I could take the route down here via E, C to D, which would be 475 kilometers. So I then have an option of which route I would like to take. And it's very easy to see in the picture. Now this information can either be represented as a network graph or as a table. And you have to know how to get from one to the other and vice versa. So you've got to be able to from the graph get the table and from the table to get the graph. So let's start by using our graph and drawing our table. So to get from point A to point B, let's say it's 100 kilometers. So to get from A to B, it's 100 or to get from B to A is 100. Of course, you can't get from A to A, B to B, C to C, and D to D. They would just be get zero kilometers, really. They're nothing. Then to get from B to C is 50, B to C is 50, and of course, B to C could be C to B or B to C. C to D is 150, C, D, is 150 or I could do C, D is 150 and I've got to do A to E is 75, A to E, I need an E on my table, A to E is 75 and of course E to A would be 75. E to E would be a gap. And E to C is 250. E to C and C to E is 250. And the rest of them don't have any roots connecting them, so they would all be gaps. And if you got one of these, you would then have to know how to read it to draw a network graph. Let's have a look at one of those. So if we have a look at example number two, we've been given a table that has distances or times between two points. I think the first thing to do that's easiest is to draw my four points. So I have A, B, C and D. Now it doesn't matter where you put those points, I just guessed. If I wanted to put the points over here, A, B, C and D, that would be fine as well. And actually maybe I'll do both examples to show you that it makes absolutely no difference and that I get two different graphs but with all the information correctly put on it. And I'll do them separately so we don't get confused. So this would be solution number one and this could be a solution number two. And this is where this topic gets a little bit complicated because there are often more than one correct answer. So my first thing on the table is A to A is obviously a nothing because you're connecting the same point. To get from A to B, I have a route that should take 10. 
from A to C, I might just cross it off because I've actually done it. A to C is 15. And A to D is 28. A to D is 28. Okay, so far so good. B to A is 10, we've already done that. B to C is 8. B to C, that's this one down here, that would be 8. B to D is 22. 22. And C to A I've already done. C to B, you would notice that all of these top ones are the same as all of the bottom ones. So if you notice that, then you wouldn't have to go through both of them. If you don't notice, then just keep doing all of them, that's fine. And C to D is 18. And if you wanted to check, you could just go through all of these ones and you would notice that they've all been done already. And that would be my network graph. Now I did tell you that we could draw the points in any order, so let's have a look at the solution number two. And maybe I'll do it in a different colour so that we don't get confused. So A to B is 10. There's that. We'll do, draw, cross them off in a different direction. A to C is 15. A to C is 15. A to D is 28. There's D down there. A to D is 28. B to C is 8. B to C is 8. And B to D is 22. B to D is 22. And my last one is C to D is 18. Well, they look pretty similar, but I've got C and D the other way around. Again, both of them are correct because both of them show all the vertices and all the different routes to get from each vertice to the other with the right weight assigned to it. Now, hopefully that's not too overwhelming for everybody. So this brings us to the end of Weighted Networks. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe below. See you next time.